Well, it's, um, I, I always like to get excited when I have to get my purple pen out because it means I'm updating my charts. <laughs> Um, good doing our compass um, deviation chart because um, our, our viewers and our followers gave us a lot better methodology uh, in which to do it in that um, we're going to look at um, bearings using particular buoy and markers on the shore now we've got uh, kill root uh, power station easy peasy um, we've got a um, clock tower which is pretty all right and then we're also using the marina entrance as well so we've got a variety of uh, places that we're going to use our bearings and um, as one of our followers uh, pointed out that is a lot better having said that though we still have come out at slack tide so that the tidal component can be eliminated well we've taken a whole pile of uh, reverse bearings and forward bearings and of the two doing the reverse bearing is much much harder and very difficult um, it's quite hard actually to keep the boat on a constant heading even for a forward bearing but um, we've done it and we've got a whole range of them and we'll just have to see how they come out when we get back yeah I found um, it quite interesting trying to like you say, keep the boat steady and um, things like that. It was really hard, but... And we had a couple of ferries to dodge. <laughs> Just a couple. But, you know... I um, mean, we we stayed out of their way. We didn't get we didn't get particularly close. Well, I, th I think the closest we got was we were running parallel to the channel at one point, And we were about a third of a mile away from the Stena. So, you know, it wasn't normal. particularly... Normal. <laughs> I was going to say normal operations um, yeah. for Belfast Lock, but... Very much so. So we've just been keeping an eye. The AIS has been wonderful. Yeah, well, anyway, we're on our way back to the marina now. Um, there's not really enough wind to do sailing. We have the sails prepped to go just in case, but it's nice to be out. But we're going to go back in now, settle ourselves down and take it from there. Are you having problems? Yeah. I'm, I'm drunk as the skunk. And the voice from China, from Liverpool, have got me drunk as the skunk. But our journey is about people. Oh, time. Hang on a second. It's still time. So excuse me. <laughs> There's some people out there. All you can see is the side of them. Our journey is about people. We want to meet people, have fun, enjoy ourselves. You know, yeah, we want to. Yeah, they're talking about football. Oh, I'm not interested in football. Apparently, the guys are talking about football. No. I live next door, but once I'm on United for they're talking about 10 Ever years. No, eight years, I think it was. They're that. talking about Everton. Eight, well. Anyway, eight years. I never went into the ground once while I was there. Having said Hang that. Hang on, wait, wait, wait. You're in focus now. Come on. <laughs> I'm being the boys in Shiloh from feeding us too much booze. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid to say. No, I'm very sorry, she can't hack it quite as much as I can. Boo, she's a wee bit tired. A little bit of drink, and she's out for the count. The lassitude is strong with this one. So, Beverly, it's time to yet once again plot our deviation. But I believe we've got to do some variation first. We have, I've got a Breton Charter and a pencil and I'm not afraid to use them. So what we're going to do is, you saw last time that we had 
this list of things that we were going to use as transit lines out in Belfast Lock. Uh, not all of them worked. When we went out to look at them, they some of the things weren't as clear as we thought they were going to be. So necessity is the mother of invention, of course. So we made up some other ones while we were out there. So we've got lines to fill them in. And um, as you can see on this page here, we've covered most of the compass. So we're happy bunnies. So what we're going to do is we're going to put them on the chart and we are going to see how they measure up and we will get our deviation card and we'll plot it in the ship's log and we'll go from there. Now one of the things that comes along is you get all these acronyms like CADET and little sayings like magged grid get rid meaning that if you go from magnetic to the grid you've got to subtract things off and these things are different if you're west or east. So if your variation on your chart is to the west of true, what way around do you do these things? Does mag to grid get rid work if your variation is to the east of true? It's confusing. I find it confusing. Um, there are other variations. Mag to grid get rid, cadet, uh, mag dev, Oh, no is my favourite. Um, no, I just made that one up. Um, <laughs> so what we've done instead is we'll come up with a much simpler way of figuring out what you've got to do. And the answer is here on the chart. And that's the beauty of it. So what we're going to do is we'll show you how we work out rather quickly whether we're adding or subtracting to convert from magnetic to true. So what we've got here is the compass rows on the chart. And as you can see, the true north line on the chart is at zero degrees. No surprise there. But we've also got the magnetic variation marked on the chart and it's saying that on this particular one the magnetic variation is a few degrees to the west. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to draw a line. There we go. And you can see that the line cuts the compass rows at 356. So on this chart zero degrees north magnetic is about 356. True. So to get from true coordinates to magnetic, I have to deduct four. Now, uh, Beverly has um, uh, forgotten to um, do the little bits, the changing, because, of course, this uh, compass rose was put down in... What's the year, Beverly? It's the year that I forgot to put my glasses on. Um, the date on this one is 2016, and it varies 10 degrees east each year. So I've got to lose 40 minutes off this one. Yeah. Because it's four years. So it's not um, 320, it'll be 240 for this year. So the upshot of that is that zero degrees magnetic will be two minutes, two degrees, 40 minutes less than zero true. Because look, that's where it cuts the compass rows. Exactly. And that's really, you know, what looking at the compass rows will just help you decide if you're adding or, or subtracting. subtracting. And we can just write it on. We can just write down here zero magnetic equals 357 true. It's the compass rows will tell me what I'm doing. And I can forget all the acronyms. I don't have to worry about any of them. I find it a lot simpler. If you like to use the acronyms, go for it. So Gainer. Based on yesterday's exercise, mm -hmm. doing these leading lines, what was the biggest problem we experienced? Um, well, we basically had um, the two markers that were in line, but then you had to get the boat um, squared onto it. So um, that was very difficult. And although we went out at slack tide, um, because um, the tide starts to run quite quickly, there was quite a few times that uh, Salty Lass was not actually going in a straight line towards the um, um, down the bearing. She was actually at a um, was experiencing some leeway. So again, that was one of the reasons that you really do need to go into a slack tide or try and do this where there is very little tide unlike Belfast Lock where there's quite a bit of it um, so quite a few of them we experienced leeway on the boat so that was a big big issue and was there any difference between taking a forward bearing and a reverse bearing yeah the reverse bearing was really difficult going under the reverse bearing now 
Yeah, but you're on the other. Um, you're on the wrong tower. Oh, you're I'm on the wrong jetty. Okay. You're on the wrong jetty, but yeah. I can do it like that. Yeah. It's because um, when you've got the forward bearing, you've got um, the mast being in line with the two um, markers. Whereas when you're in the reverse bearing, um, we were sort of like um, steering the boat um, the, the opposite way. Um, and we were kind of like looking at, um, mm -hmm. you know, with it behind you and things like that. And it's just really, really difficult. And you didn't know ex what was happening to the front of the boat, whether that, again, was being affected by leeway. Having two car ferries in an oil tanker didn't help, did it? <laughs> no, it didn't. But, you know, we're in Belfast Lock, so we've got to learn to cope with uh, two car ferries and uh, all the rest of it. It's just the way life is. Okay, so as well as the um, exercise we've been doing in Belfast Lock, something else we've got to do today is the passage planning book has come back out. Now, you may recall uh, several episodes ago, we did this. And I said at the time that one of the things that we do is we do not put actual tide times on this outline plan. We put relative tide times. So we say that we start with high water Belfast be at this point, uh, high water plus six hours be at this point, high water plus eight hours be at that point. Um, the reason for that is you don't know when you're going to go. Now, we did this just before the virus hit and we weren't able to do what we wanted. Um, but it looks like we're going to be able to do it tomorrow. But so I've it... got this plan out and I've got all the relative times. So I'm going to put tomorrow's tides against this and tomorrow's weather against this and see if it is still a viable plan. If it is, we're going. So this may be a short episode. I've got no idea how long this is going to be, but it's got to go up today because we might be here tomorrow. Uh, so the way that we do it um, is that um, one of us uh, does the tidal um, information and then the other person uh, comes through and looks at it and makes sure that everything is right. So in this example, uh, Beverly had forgotten that the tidal times in the reeds is in UTC. So she hadn't added the one hour for British summer time. So I've checked the work and I've made that correction. So having us both doing it just means that we... Um, spot any errors well it's um i i always like get excited when i have to get my purple pen out because it means i'm updating my charts um obviously with the electronic charts um they're managed to be kept up to date and you obviously need to update the software but with paper charts you don't have that privilege or that luxury so um, it's purple pen time and uh, in this case I'm going to do a deletion of the word AIS um, and um, I'm just going to make sure that this is the one that they're talking about but basically these lights were AIS beacons and now they're being removed they've been removed as an AIS beacon the light's still there but the AIS marker is no longer there with it. Word. AIS. Gone. Well, if you um, really need, think you need some practice um, with uh, chart work, I would really recommend um, doing um, uh, updating your charts by hand because it, it makes you look at latitude, longitude and all that sort of stuff. But one of the things that I find uh, that helps is I'm currently uh, updating 5612.1 so I just put it into the search bar and I then search for it and then I'm, I've got all the the, um, the changes for that chart and then I've done the, that change and then I go to scroll down to the next one Rather than just reading them in the order they've done them. Basically, yeah, you know, I'd rather have the chart in front of me and look for the modifications to that chart using the search bar and then I move on to the next chart. It also means that in this particular set, um, there's a whole load of charts for Port Rush, 
Well, I don't need to do those modifications because I'm not going there. It's time to go.